in the heart of academia, let it be high school or university level, where minds are always meant to thrive and knowledge is meant to constantly flourish, there exists a silent struggle that many people face, the battle against motivation. In lecture halls and libraries, in dorm rooms or coffee shops, students find themselves struggling to find a drive to study anymore, to stay focused amidst a sea of distractions. In today's world filled with endless digital temptations and mounting pressures, it's no wonder that more and more people exhibit this lack of motivation. So if you ever found yourself in this situation, fear not. You are in a sea of people, including productivity gurus fighting the same enemy. Today we are going to discuss some more tips to reignite the spark, to reclaim the passion for learning and to conquer the challenges that might to stand in our way. So welcome everybody. Just a quick intro for those of you that may not know me. I am Joanna. I am a fourth year mathematics student at the University of Oxford. And oh, did I have my fair share of challenges when it comes to staying motivated. But I think I've also discovered some very effective strategies along so many years of deep studying, of exams, of maths Olympiads, and just wanting to stay up on top of things in general. So without further ado, let's explore these tips together. In order to regain your motivation for studying, I believe it's important to split your actions into manageable chunks before, during and after your study session. So you know exactly how to proceed at any given time. So let's dive deeper into these. Before you start studying for a test, an exam, whatever it is, it is crucial that you make it clear in your mind why you are putting in the time and effort to study. It may sound silly and definitely obvious, but trust me, it is very often the case that the lack of motivation simply arises from not having clear goals in mind. Why is that? Well, to put it perhaps philosophically, motivation is within your control and the outcome is always at the same time within your control. It depends solely on your hard work and dedication. But here's the thing, you are also in charge of your motivation and you are the one and only that can motivate yourself to work harder and achieve these great things. So let me ask you, why do you want to work harder and achieve great things? Don't give me the shallow response of, oh, there is an exam or the teacher will fail me if I don't study. Think long term. Perhaps you want to have financial stability immediately after you finish university. Maybe you find a certain area absolutely fascinating and you just want to know more about it. Or maybe you want to create a better future for yourself and for your family. The possibilities are endless here. Whatever that may be, make sure you make it as clear as possible, set your goals, maybe even create one of those vision boards so you can visually see what you will gain out of studying and all that, uh, how your life will look like in, let's say, five years after your uh, studies are done and put it somewhere where you can look at it at all times whenever you are feeling down or you're feeling unmotivated. This is how you establish that so-called long-term motivation that plenty of us just simply lack. Now that we realize why we are doing a certain task, let's discuss ways that we can facilitate our studies. I would highly, highly recommend that before you dive into work, you take a moment to step outside. Obviously, weather permitting, a bit sad if you live in England like me, but you know, we make do, we have to. So a brief walk can work wonders in refreshing your mind and preparing you for your focused study session. All right, now that we are back at our desks, we want to make sure that we are well organized. And by that, I mean two things. And the first one is to make sure you optimize your study environment. So take a moment to just study up your study space. An organized workspace can enhance concentration and productivity. On the other hand, a messy workplace will make you feel more anxious and stressed out and you will have less clarity over the objectives of your study session. The second thing is to make sure you are not feeling overwhelmed by your workload. This is definitely fixable, so don't worry if you ever feel like that. I feel like that all the time until I do this step. As straightforward as it may sound, just jot down your tasks. Simply visualizing your to-do list can make it seem more manageable and provide a clear roadmap for your study session. Sometimes just memorizing all the assignments that you need to do, all your tasks can just feel very overwhelming. While writing the, them down on a piece of paper or on a note-taking app on your laptop can eliminate the stress very, very easily. I would go even further into making sure I prioritize all of my tasks based on either deadlines or their difficulty. Personally, I would start with the most difficult task when I have more energy and move on to easier tasks as the day progresses. 
This is entirely up to you though, so experiment with this prioritization and see what works best for you. Now we are very much ready to jump into the study session. We have a clear environment both physically and mentally and we have established our goals. So what's next? Well, get a thing done. I know it's definitely not as easy as it sounds and the task can become very boring after working on it for a while. So how do we manage this? First things first, Focus on one single task at a time. Multitasking is not the way to go. You'll find yourself trying to simultaneously work on more things at a time, but your focus will not be on any of these tasks. And you'll probably finish an assignment in way, way more time than you could if you were to do just one single task at a time. So simply commit to a single task and don't let your to-do list take your attention to something else when the first uh, task starts getting difficult. You can even write down a task that you are currently working on on a sticky note as a constant reminder of what you have to do and where your entire focus should be in that moment. One thing I personally find very helpful as well is to listen to some music while I am working. Now, unless I am doing an admin like no brain power task, I never listen to music with lyrics as it is very distracting. There are however plenty of other options and Maybe not just as good, but they make do, you know. For example, you can create a study playlist filled with lo-fi beats or even movie soundtracks. There are also several YouTube videos that create a certain ambiance like rainy day at a coffee shop, and those are quite nice to have in the background while you're studying. There is also an increased popularity in binaural beats. They have been scientifically proven to enhance focus. Just make sure that you wear headphones if you decide to listen to these, as the whole point besides them is that you have sounds of different frequencies in each ear, so it only works with headphones. Now, our biggest enemy, I guess, the biggest distraction we have is at our own fingertips, and it's our phones. What do we do with them while we study? So let's firstly establish if you actually need your phone for anything while we study. If you are using a computational tool, say the calculator app or maybe Wolfram Alpha, then make sure you restrict access to social media apps and streaming services from the settings in your phone. If you don't need it for anything at all, anything study related, my best advice would be to just put them away out of your reach, whether that's on your bed away from your desk or even in another room or lock it inside a wardrobe or something. If you still find that it is a bit too strict or you still find yourself moving back and forth to just grab your phone, maybe downloading one of those focus apps like Forest or Flora that don't allow you to exit it until a certain time limit has passed might be beneficial. Now, in terms of how to study, now that is an entirely different story. There are plenty of methods and only you can know what works for you. So make sure to explore different methods, whether it's flashcards, past papers, or teaching the material to someone else, discover that one approach that resonates with you. The one method that always seems to be working for me personally is combining active recall with spaced repetition. To explain it shortly, don't just memorize the material, actively test yourself on the material. And you can do this by creating flashcards or writing definitions, theorems and proofs from memory every time you learn one. Then make sure you revise everything that you have learned at spaced out intervals of time. So for example, if I learn something today, I will revise it two days later, then three days after that, then five and so on. If you want me to talk more in depth about my study method that incorporates all of these, then just let me know in the comments and I'll be sure to make a video about it. Now, obviously don't spend too much time at once just studying because you will burn out. So don't forget to schedule regular breaks during your study sessions. Taking short breaks is definitely the key to help you maintain focus and productivity. How I like to do things to take either a 10 minute break after 50 minutes of deep work or a longer 15 to 20 minute break after an hour and a half of continuously working. Now, if you have friends that are studying the same topics as you, never underestimate the power of discussing the material. It can very much deepen your understanding of the material. Maybe try explaining in your own words what you understood from a certain topic to your friend and have them do the same to you. It is not in vain that people say they always learn best from their classmate in the few minutes of break before a test. Now we can finally relax. Well done, everybody. The study session is over. What should we do now? Can we find anything we're doing after a study session to improve future performance? I definitely would say so. I'm going to say this first because there are no words to express how much I value this. Prioritize your physical and mental health. 
So step away from studying and go do something for your own well-being. Go to the gym, do a home workout, play a certain sport with your mates, just anything. Make sure you get enough hours of sleep at night and that you eat nutritious meals. Effective studying cannot be sustained if these other factors are not in check. After a good study session, I find it essential to make sure to reflect on my progress and on my accomplishments. You don't need to do this after every single study session, but make sure you do it regularly. So keep track of your achievements and how far you've come. Appreciate that it was your own actions and your own work that led to this task being completed. So take a moment to appreciate yourself and to congratulate yourself. Celebrating milestones, no matter how small, can boost confidence and motivation. Also ask yourself what worked and what didn't throughout the session. Chances are that if you can identify an issue, you can for sure find a suitable solution for it. So decide what approach you will take for your future study sessions based on the evidence that you have now collected. And yeah, that's pretty much it. It's quite simple actually. So good job on finalizing a meaningful and productive study session. So there you have it. By incorporating all of these strategies into your study routine, you can unlock your motivation and achieve academic success. It is all for sure, not just about studying harder, but studying smarter, as cliche and old fashioned as it may sound. I hope you have genuinely enjoyed this video. Make sure to like it if you did. Comment down below any questions you might have or any video suggestions. And lastly, follow me on Instagram for more content if you want. I definitely am more active there. So best of luck on your academic journey and I will see you very, very soon with a new video. So goodbye. I'm sick of daydreaming. I just want the feeling of you in my bed. I'm down at this waistline, right below your waistline. Want you by my head.